certainly wish him luck. And it's time now for us to take a look back at this week's headline-making stories and our reporters rewind. Our guests at the roundtable are Brandon Robinson. He's a sports writer at The Source magazine. Many of you, of course, know him well. Also joining us again is, is Katie Kleblesek, who is a writer and reproductive rights activist. And Wallace Ford, an Arise News contributor and a political blogger and professor at Medgar Evers College, will be joining us very shortly on the set here. Well, both of you, welcome to the show. I, I, I want to start off, and we're going to, of course, talk about the Rice Goodell story, but also I want to talk a little bit about uh, the president's speech. And of course, Brandon, you can chime in on this too. Everybody has an opinion sure. about this. Uh, you know, some people say perhaps this may be more of the same with the president. He really didn't announce anything new. But a lot of what a lot of people are concerned about: how long are we going to be involved in this particular? Uh, and he's not calling it a war. I, I would say maybe he's calling it a conflict. It, 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 Katie, what are, what are your thoughts about? This? I feel like we've never called it a war. I mean, we've been we've been there certainly for the last. 10, 15, 20 years, depending on how long you consider it going back to. And we, we talk a lot about it as a conflict or we're just going to take care of this one thing. And a lot of a lot of what was in that speech sounded very much like a path to escalation again. I mean, it sounds very reasonable initially, right? But America kind of has a long history of very initially reasonable sounding goals when it comes to foreign policy that then end up escalating. And it's it felt a little familiar. I hope that I'm wrong, but it, it was concerning for me. Well, here's the thing. You know, the president's polls are down, uh, record lows, some would suggest. I believe that happens to be the case. But at the same token, a country that is somewhat pretty much war weary at this point, many polls suggest, I think it was the NBC uh, Wall Street Journal poll suggested that Americans are all for some type of military intervention in the Middle East, speci specifically uh, in this particular concept, uh, conflict. Are you surprised about this? I'm not. I think people are kind of bored right now. I think that, you know, with the, talking, kind of piggybacking off what you said about uh, we've always been in these talks in this war. I, when I watched the president's speech the other day, mm -hmm. I kind of felt like I was back in high school when we went to war in, in Iraq with, when President Bush uh, was, was announcing, you know, that they, these findings were what they were. And I kind of feel like he's, in a, in a lot of respects, carrying on tradition, if you will, based off of what happened a decade ago. Mm -hmm. I feel like the president's numbers are obviously low because people were in it. We're still Still, numbers-wise, we're not looking good. People are still unemployed. We're in a recession, and mm -hmm. you know things of that sort. But I think that um, I, I think it's it's kind of difficult right now. I think that this administration is better with uh, other nations as far as talking with them and kind of getting them calm and stuff like that. As far as you know, relations with other countries. But right. I really do think that it, it's it reminds me so much of last decade. I, right. I can't vocalize that enough. Right, Wallace, you're, you're joining us now. Thanks for thanks sure. for being My here. Pleasure. My pleasure. My pleasure. Good to see you. I've been here all along. Got the megaphone the whole bit. <laughs> I've been here all along. You know, we, we live in a technical society here, you know, and I'm sure. not media savvy here, but, you know, I'm just wondering because of, of what we've seen with these beheadings uh, of, of two Americans, if, if Americans are basically more re reactionary and they respond to this in gung ho because of what they have seen, uh, had they not seen those beheadings, would we be so willing in terms of the polls that suggest uh, to go ahead and do some military intervention? Here? Well, yeah, I mean, we have to understand that this is part of ISIS strategy. When they do these public beheadings, it's, it's, this is a cultural tradition that, that takes place in a number of areas, not only in the Middle East, but in particular, uh, we, we see it happening there, where indeed it's meant to inflame, it's meant to terrorize, it's meant to scare your opponent, as opposed to, I guess they could have just shot him or strangled mm. him or something else, but beheading is, you know, strikes everybody as being particularly bad, but you're dead no matter what, what takes place here, but it's, you know, we're responding to terror tactics right. in just the way they want us to, and, you know, history is, is, is a difficult thing for people to learn. Mm. Um, you know, the, the, re the reality is what we're dealing with right now, and I think you mentioned it just a moment ago, what we're dealing with right now is the aftermath of the Bush Cheney um, debacle, which which took place um, now over over 10, 12 years ago. And people say, well, no, it's it's Barack Obama's war now, and and it's Barack Obama's situation. But okay. but, but it's but it's not. All it right. really but, isn't. but here we have a key point here: you, you, Barack Obama's debacle, and here we have a situation here. We, we're we're beyond midterm elections right now, okay? And even uh, the president himself said that perhaps this could be maybe three years or more. We don't know. I'm going to call this a hot potato. He's going to pass this hot potato off to the next president. And the next president may have Barack Obama's debacle if we can't quash ISIS uh, in a concerted manner and soon. Katie, what are your thoughts? I think that sounds possible. I mean, if, if he's just trying to make sure we get past the midterms without asserting the Democrats, I mean, putting it off, it's, I mean, the midterms are right around the corner. The thing that's most troubling to me, and Wallace really alluded to it, is that 
the disproportionate response provocation. I mean, that's what that's what um, that's what the, the 9/11 was about, right? It was mm -hmm. about provoking a disproportionate response where America would be stuck in a long-term, expensive, deadly war. And if that's what was going with the beheadings, was to provoke us into being, you know, more involved in the region, then we should be measured about our response to that, even so, though we'd yeah, like to react. But, but in this time. whole situation, it's it's really a tar baby, all right? Mm -hmm. But it's a Bush Cheney tar baby, and to call it a Barack Obama's debacle is just not looking at you know, at all due respect. I mean, it's not taking the entire historical I'm context. I'm just being the advocate here. You know, no, I understand. It's inheritance. <laughs> it's inheritance. Yeah. 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 And, and, yeah. Well, I'll just say yeah. the least. And yeah. so you just can't say, well, you know, Barack Obama should do something with, with where a, 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 an entire region has been totally destabilized. Right. Uh, and, and there was no in strategy in the first place for doing what was done back in 19, uh, 2002, 2003. And so we're left with this, Barack Obama's left with, so I don't know if it's a hot potato, it's a big mess. It's well, a big mess, well, and, 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 and I don't know that there's, unfortunately, an Americans like a magic bullet, take a mm -hmm. pill, do one thing, and it'll be okay. That's not what's happening. Right, I'm going to call it a hot potato. Anyway, let's move on here <laughs> to, to, to the next subject. We've got only a couple of minutes left here. The 800-pound gorilla in the room, guys. Of course, the Ray Rice uh, uh, debacle right now. <laughs> Where are we with this in terms of either figuring out the NFL is going to do something with Goodell, and if the, this people are really going to take a serious a turn and look at domestic abuse and how sports teams deal with it, how America deals with it. I think Americans. it's a combination of both. I think first and foremost, an individual investigation is going on where they're actually investigating to see whether or not uh, Commissioner Goodell actually uh, did know about it. Uh, obviously, the gorilla in the room, as you, as you will, mm -hmm. uh, can say that the NFL office did have the tape. Uh, but at the same time, I think it, it, it's kind of disconcerting that an event such as that has to happen in order for people to talk about one of the silent killers. They, they say, mm. what, cancer is the silent killer, they often right. say. Domestic violence is something that is often not talked about in every in everyday person's home, as well as people that are rich millionaires that play sports. And well, unfortunately, this had to happen and it's thought-provoking, but I think people will look at it. How long? Who's to say? Right. Well, so I'm going to let you have the last word. Katie, I want to, I, I want to uh, begin with you in the situation. We have a situation I mentioned earlier where you have a woman wearing a Rice jersey at the at a Baltimore Ravens game saying, several. hey, look. Several. You know, he, well, several, yes. But I'm just talking about one that they interviewed and said, look, you know, uh, she hit him first. Are we getting mixed messages here? Well, well that, that situation is asking one woman or a couple of women wearing a jersey to speak for all women, mm -hmm. which is kind of ridiculous. Mm -hmm. um, there is absolutely well a culture of normalized male violence. Mm -hmm. um, we, we live in that. We saw that with the Yes All Women hashtag earlier this year. A lot of people, myself included, hadn't realized they were a survivor of abuse until that discussion became more public and we started mm -hmm. talking about what consent and, and interrelationships are supposed to look like. So a couple of women in Ray Rice jerseys, sure, or they could just... Be, they had them already and they're a fan and so they're just sort of, you know, wearing what they've got in order to be, you know, defiant. But the idea that Goodell didn't know is ridiculous. And this investigation <laughs> is, is more ridiculous than that even. It's being run by a guy who works for the law firm that the Ravens owner worked at for 30 years. So the idea that we're going to get to the truth because right. of it is just, I mean. Okay, we got about 40 yeah, seconds. Yeah, what was yeah, it last and last yeah, word? Yeah, Commissioner Goodell uh, was paid $44 million last year by the NFL. They didn't pay him d just because he's a nice guy. They because he helped the owners make a lot of money. I mm -hmm. think the owners are going to look for every way to try and keep him on board because Absolutely. of that. His, his credibility is pretty damaged right now. His brand is pretty damaged. But uh, just keep that number, $44 million in mind. They're not paying him that just because he's got a bright smile. Right, and he makes a good point there in closing here. The NFL is looking to raise billions of dollars even more amongst the ownership here. Uh, can Condoleezza Rice do it? A good PR uh, uh, stunt or ploy to get her in here, she can't raise the money. A lot of owners don't really want her in. And but she's a good recruiter for Stanford basketball. Well, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that'll have to be the last one. Brandon, Katie, Wallace. Okay, it's always a pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. All right. Thank you, sir. And you're watching Arise America. All right. Guys, great.